I said that Emmy Noether was the most important female mathematician of all time. Mathematicians, you are all sitting in this room, you're all mathematicians. And I don't know if you think of yourself in that way, but I want you to start if you don't. Mathematicians, you're not just people who do maths, you are mathematicians. Now, when you see a chapter that says problems I enjoy, maybe you look at it and you recoil. I want you to change your mindset to that. I hope by the end of this course, which will finish basically at the end of term three, you'll look at that and say, well, of course that's what you would name a chapter. Because here's what I'd like you to, the first thing I want you to have written underneath um, this subheading, which is a little quote for you. Mathematicians, they aren't people who find maths easy. This is a common misconception, right? Oh, you're really good at arithmetic, or you can see patterns really easily, you can solve Sudokus really fast. That must make you, that you're the kind of person to be a mathematician. Mathematicians aren't people who find maths easy. I find maths really, really hard. But what sets mathematicians apart from everyone else is that they're the people, they're the ones who enjoy how hard it is. Okay. When you go through and you do some of these problems, okay, you will find something really challenging and the solution will not just slap you in the face, you'll think this doesn't make any sense. Okay? And you might be tempted to think, oh, am I really, do I really belong here? Am I really a mathematician? The answer is not whether you find it easy or hard, but what your response to that is. Okay? So we're going to do one of these problems together. I'm going to walk you through it. Um, I'm going to solve it for you, and as I do that, I'm going to point out three particular skills. I'm going to put them up here right now. That you will need to demonstrate through all of the problems that you do throughout this entire course. Okay, um, the three skills are dissect, eliminate. Actually, sorry, it's explore and eliminate, and then communicate. Okay, keeping like maybe a pen in the big book so that you uh, don't lose your spot, I now want you to just really quickly pick up the little book. This is the, uh, the student problem. So for those of you who've never been part of an enrichment course before, um, I want you to open up the student problems and uh, sort of even in the middle of the book actually, because it's quite a short book, you'll see the first couple of problems. Uh, problem one, problem two, problem three. And over the page, it goes all the way to problem 16. So this is a 16 week course. Each week you'll be required to submit one of these problems to me and then I will mark it and I will hand it back to you. Okay. Now, what we do in the big thick book is aimed at preparing you to do these problems. I cannot show you how to do these problems. This is for you to submit. I'm actually going to take all of your marks and then I'm going to submit it to the Australian Mathematics Trust and you get a certificate, you know, credit distinction, high distinction, all that kind of thing. So I cannot help you with these questions. Uh, nor can you help each other with actually writing these questions and your answers. However, you're welcome to discuss it with like, oh, how did you approach this and all that kind of thing, so long as you actually form your own solution. So the question I'm about to demonstrate for you out of the problems I enjoy is aimed at preparing you to solve problems one and problem two, right? So these skills here, one, two, and three, uh, they're going to be what you're going to need for problems one and two. And really, all of the problems, that's why we're starting with them. <coughs> all right, so now I'm going to borrow... Justin, can I borrow your book for a minute? The question I'm going to ask us to do together is question four. Uh, under problems I enjoy, question four. It's such an archetypal uh, mathematics question about the ages of three children. So I'm going to give you uh, a couple of minutes to read this question to yourself, to think about it, and to think about how you would start it. All right, are you puzzled? Are you puzzled? Now, one of the reasons why this is called Problems I Enjoy is because each of these problems, the wonderful thing about it, and I hope the thing that you, you sort of, as an attitude take out of it, is that certain problems, certain problems, if they are posed well, and if they're clever, then they can reveal to us sort of um, uh, gaps in our own understanding. It's a little bit like uh, a magician. If you've ever, who's ever watched a magician before? Like a real, yeah, okay. If you've ever watched a magician before, 
We don't really go to magicians to be tricked because who enjoys that, right? And we know obviously there's some trick behind it. What we go to a magician to do is to help us understand, all right, let's challenge our assumptions about how we know or how we think we know things, right? I was sure that object was gonna end up over here, but somehow she made it appear over here, right? And this problem sort of does that to you because you look through, you're like, okay, I'm following so far, I'm following. And then you're like, violins? What do violins have to do with anything? So let me explain. First clue or first suggestion is we're gonna to have to dissect this question. Dissection is something that's important whatever question that you do, but these problems are particularly sort of embodying that because you have all this information here and if you just look at it all at one go, it's just overwhelming, okay? So a classic mathematical strategy is to dissect and sort of work at it in pieces, okay? Now hopefully you can see there are three distinct pieces that you can dissect this question into. Three distinct sets of information I didn't mean to use the word set, but that's okay. Uh, that are going to help us solve this. So I'm going to say, what, what did I say this question for? Is it? Yeah. Yeah, question four. So maybe you want to follow with me as you're writing in your book, okay? The three sections of information, I'm just going to call them A, B, and C, okay? What's the first piece of information that you can see which is distinct and hangs on its own? What can you tell me? Three children. Okay, there's three children. But immediately after knowing that there's three children, they tell you the first fact that actually helps you work out something about the three children. What do you know about their ages? What's the very first thing? They are to 13. Okay, here's the first piece of information. But we already know, it doesn't take us much imagination to realize, okay, well that's not enough. I need more information. And that's why there are more sections, more pieces that we need to dissect. We'll come back to this add to 13 in a minute. What's the next thing that you get told? Okay, so the three ages, they multiply to, now, in addition to saying it's on a study door, the reason why they say the study door is actually, I think they end the sentence by saying, it's not just there, it's something they can see. both see, right? So the three ages multiply to a known number. In other words, this person who's finding out, who's trying to work out the ages, right, knows what that number is, knows the product of these three numbers, okay? Do they know the answer yet? At this point in the question, no. What's the last thing you hear? The violin. The violin. <laughs> okay, let's just write that down. The violin. Okay, so this is the first thing that we've done. And uh, questions in, you know, all of mathematics that you have a look at, but particularly like normal syllabus mathematics, one of the things about say mathematics section one and two is you look at a problem and you're like, oh my goodness, there's like a whole paragraph of text there. Or there's just so many symbols, I don't even know where to start. The way you start is you dissect it into digestible pieces, okay? We've just done that. It looked weird to start with, but now we've got parts that we can sort of work at gently, which leads us to our next thing. We're gonna explore these options and then we're gonna try and eliminate out possibilities, okay? So let's explore. Three children, their ages add to 13. Mm. 13. 13 is not a very large number, right? This is actually within the realm of possibility for us to actually explore by hand. Now, some things are not. Some things are clearly designed when you look at it. Um, you know, one of the questions that you often get is something like, how many numbers less than a million are divisible by seven or something like that? Okay. You're like, okay, they clearly don't want me to list out a million numbers, okay? But here, when you see 13, you're like, hmm, okay, I can have a dig at this. So I'm gonna pause for a moment, and I'm gonna ask you to see how many combinations do you think there are, and you, I'm happy for you to work with a friend to do this, of ages of three children that add to 13. It's a small number, it might be quicker than you think. Can you have a go? 